Hello, glad that you are able to join us today. We're going to be talking about drawings. So what is it about drawings that we need to know for our projects? We're going to use drawings for our scope of work. We're going to be using drawings for estimating. We're going to be using drawings for instructions of how to build this project. So drawings are very important for us in the construction industry. But understanding the development of drawings and how they come to be is also very important because each stage or level of completion of drawings is going to be important in how we use the information that comes from the drawings. So with that, I'm Corey Fisk with Construction Management Online. We're going to be going through a mini skill builder course on how are drawings created. So we will just get started and really knowing and understanding how we're gonna use the information at each of the different stages of drawings. So the four stages that we're gonna be talking about are conceptual, schematic, design development, and working drawings. So when we're talking about conceptual drawings, we are talking about drawings that are usually somewhere between five to 10% complete. Um, these are going to be used for really budgetary estimates or determining the feasibility of your project. Now, these might even look like those napkins that have drawings of beautiful buildings put on them by a superintendent sitting over coffee with the owner at a Denny's restaurant. These do not have significant detail. They don't have a lot of information. They're really just there to capture the understanding of what the owner is going to be desiring in this potential project. So the type of people who use conceptual drawings are going to be the owners themselves, the stakeholders involved in the project. And then we can also use it to be able to develop a foundational base of financial obligation and where we need to go for any kind of private loans or bank loans that are going to be supporting this project. The purpose is to establish an overall vision and just really be able to offer a picture for others to be able to give us feedback. Now, a conceptual drawing might look something like this, where it is sketched out. Um, you know, you can see that it has stairs. You can see that there are different types of exterior siding that are going to be put on this. But other than that, there's not a lot of detail. I can't tell from this picture if it is going to have wood frames or vinyl frames for the windows. It's really even hard to tell if it's going to have a steel, architectural steel roofing or if it's going to have shingles on it. But this gives me a really good idea about what the project is going to be, obviously a residential house, and gives me an understanding of the different levels that we're going to be expecting when we move into a more detailed design. So when we're looking at schematic drawings, these are going to find themselves somewhere between a 10 to 30, sometimes even 40% completion. We're going to be able to provide estimates that have a 20 to 30% accuracy when we're using these drawings, because again, it's going to show an overall um, outline or skeleton of the expectations of this project. The people who are going to be using these schematic drawings include architects, clients, um, anybody who's going to be understanding the permit process or the um, creation of the code requirements and criteria that need to go into this project. And then we're going to use this to develop conceptual layout drawings that are going to give us that preliminary review of the intention of the project. 
So it might look something like this that has, you know, just even a little bit more detail. It has a little more visual uh, appearance to it that lets the aesthetics pop out and just gives us a better feeling, understanding and idea of what this project is going to be about. The third one is going to be our design development. So design development drawings are very important because there are a number of different delivery methods that can start really looking at producing the physical construction on a job site with design development drawings. These are going to be somewhere between a 30 to 60% completion. And our estimate is going to start becoming more accurate. We have more details that are going to be presented that are going to let us know the quality and the standard that it is going to be expected in this particular project. This is going to be used by architects, engineers. Clients are going to be able to see better what it is that the intent of the drawings is going to produce. And contractors are going to be using these design development drawings in understanding exactly what is going to be asked for in the project. The purpose for design development is for the finalization of those design details. This is an excellent opportunity for us to be able to start really getting collaboration from our consultants and our subcontractors that are going to be providing input on moving this project forward. And it's going to also have enough information that we can really start to prepare the construction documents so that we understand clearly what the scope of the work is and we can put in place expectations and boundaries around this particular project. This is what design development might actually look like. We're going to start having more notes associated with what's going on in the drawings. There's a lot more depth and detail. We can see that this is clearly a 3D drawing that we're going to be working from that gives an aesthetic and visual of the ex expectations of the final product. But there's also a lot of dimensions and extension lines that have been added to this. There's detail in the floor plan and an understanding of the different materials and products that are going to be used in the project from this point forward. Then the last set of drawings are working construction drawings. Now, I know that on our slide, it talks about these being 100% complete, but I think it's fair to recognize that we can never be at 100% completion with our drawings, just knowing and understanding it is inherent for things to change in the construction industry. So we will constantly be updating these working construction drawings with what we call as built and confirming that the drawings are reflecting the work as it has been built. However, our amount of work and detail that's gone into these working drawings is going to provide us the most accurate estimate that we can create at the time before the project has started to actually go into the construction process. So usually we're looking at these estimates being somewhere in the 5 to 10% accuracy. And it's going to be used by contractors for that bidding process. And now also for the movement into actual physical construction phase. The inspectors are going to be using this and rely on this for making sure that everything is to code and is being built the way that the intended drawings have identified. Because remember, sometimes drawings are more than code required and the owner wants above and beyond, which would be the new requirement for the contractor to meet. 
These working drawings are also going to be the finalized drawings used by project managers to be able to manage the project and ensure that everyone is on the same page. The purpose of these drawings, again, is for detailed construction in instructions and for understanding that we have implemented required building code for compliance in this project. This is going to be the final say of how this project needs to be built. So our working drawings are going to be finalized in a way that allows us to capture everything that we thought that the owner wanted at the completion of this deliverable. This might be what a final set of drawings would look like. We can definitely see there's a lot more detail involved in this particular house that we've been walking through the steps of how drawings are developed. There's notes and or specifications that are part of the information that will be used to be able to help us guide in our expectations and instructions of the project. There's floor plans involved that allow distances and measurements of different expectations that are going to be required for this particular project. And this is where we would just really want to know that all of the information has been compiled in one location so that we're not trying to dig around looking for information that is going to be necessary in order for us to fulfill the obligation of the intended in deliverable for this particular project. These four steps of, of your drawings are gonna get us to this absolutely beautiful end project. And so this actually is called a rendering. This is something that gives us an overall master plan vision of what is gonna be expected at the completion of the project. And so this is what our owner is going to be able to look forward to. So understanding the different stages of a project is extremely important in knowing what you're going to do with the information that you pull from each of these stages. So we have conceptual, which is going to be basically just a sketch that could be done at a Denny's restaurant on a napkin and gives us an overall view of what we are thinking that the owner or client would like out of this project. Then we're gonna move into a schematic design phase, which is basically the skeleton. It's the outline of the project. And the design development stage is gonna put the meat and muscle onto our skeleton to be able to provide the depth of detail necessary that if we wanted to start construction in a design build type of delivery method, we would be able to do that. And then we're gonna move into our working drawings. And these working drawings are going to be part of the living contract that we are going to build off of. These are gonna provide instruction. They're going to be able to provide the most accurate opportunity at an estimate. And they're gonna give us the biggest, clearest picture of the intent of how the owner wants the deliverable to be. So thank you so much for joining me, knowing and understanding these different phases of construction drawings. If you would like to see other courses or be able to move into understanding task-specific requirements in construction management, then join us with our Skill Builder membership. Otherwise, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it, and we will see you next time.